I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. The very first thing that we have is to set the selection of the winter schedule. And <clears throat> the holidays in the December and January fall on the calendar, the schedule below only uh, proposes that the board take legal holidays off in the months of December and January. So our next scheduled meeting will be December 18th. And then we'll be off for a couple of weeks because of the holidays. And we'll be back on Monday, January 8th. And then there's another holiday and we'll be back on uh, Monday, January 22nd. So, um, anybody have any questions or comments about that? No, I would move the schedule as noted. Second. Any questions or comments? Every number, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. if you would you'd allow me uh, under announcements, okay. uh, I'd like to begin the meeting uh, with some sad news. There's a Pembroke citizen, uh, Betty Nelson, who worked at Stop and Shop right in the center of town, who's, uh, who recently passed away. She was a good friend of my wife and to a lot of people in, uh, in the Pembroke community. And if you'd allow me, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to have a moment of silence and remembrance of, uh, of Betty Nelson. So if you join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, so we need to vote to accept the minutes of December 4th, 2017. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board vote to accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of December 4th, 2017, as written. I have a second. I have a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. Vote to renew the annual liquor license, live entertainment, Sunday entertainment, and amusement device licenses subject to the approval of the town treasurer and health agent. And that's all posted on the um, on the agenda. So if anybody wants to know who has a liquor license, who has live entertainment and amusement devices or Sunday, uh, you can look right on the agenda and see it. Okay, Mr. Chairman, move to approve the renewal of the full list of 2018 liquor licenses as presented and as printed subject to the approval of the ABCC. Second. Any questions or comments about the liquor licenses? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Yes, yeah, sir. And we need a second motion to approve live entertainment, Sunday entertainment, and amusement devices. Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the renewal list as printed of the 2018 live entertainment, Sunday entertainment, and amusement device licenses as printed. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Is there any old business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to uh, ask if we have completed the member list of the Capital Funding Study Committee. Uh, last week, uh, I think we needed one additional member from the general public. I'm not sure if we have gotten 
in person <coughs> to come forward. We have not yet gotten them into the public. We are seeking Thank that. Thank you. Uh, the second item I have under all business is um, for next week, perhaps, uh, an update on the Comcast contract. If that could be on the agenda for next week, thank you very much. I can probably give you um, just a brief synopsis because I was at the last meeting and um, of that as I'm the representative from the selectmen to this contract for Comcast and um, they refused to renew our um, contract early. So as far as um, understanding, unless there's uh, more communication with them, it would not be renewed early. So it would be to the town's advantage to renew the contract earlier than is required and Comcast wants to discuss the expiration date only. They don't want to renew it early. They, don't, they said they don't want to renew it early. Okay. That was the answer they gave us. Okay. Well, I think that satisfies my question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we uh, have five uh, in the audience. Oh, I didn't realize that. Sorry about that. that oh, it's okay. That come right up. Matt uh, Edgerton from uh, Chamber of Commerce. Okay, I have a few notes here. So. Um, good evening, gentlemen, and to the people of Pembroke. Um, one of the greatest benefits of being in the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce is that um, you get to come to the Pembroke Spotlight and, and sponsor you, uh, spotlight your business and to the selectmen and to the residents of the town. Um, Pembroke Town News, as you probably know, presents the local government and events in a whole new way, on the internet and Facebook, on YouTube and Instagram, and who knows what other websites are going to come up. We also have our own website, PembrokeTownNews.com. It's just kind of a new thing. Um, PTN is supported by our advertisers. They've made it all possible. Because they're the ones that are paying the bills for us. Um, we have Tiny and Sons Auto Glass, Damon D. Audi, Mike Damon, from uh, the Certified Public Accountants. Um, and performance appraisal also. We're just about to begin an ad campaign, so hopefully some local businesses will hear this and they'll want to advertise with us, but you'll be hearing from us as well. Um, P10 is part of Quattrofold Media Group, LLC. It's the parent company of Pembroke Town News, Quattrofold Drone Services, and Video Services. So we also produce aerial videos from, for drone, from the drone for real estate companies, homeowners, and local government agencies, like the Pembroke Herring Fisheries Commission and some other groups that can use some aerial photography. Um, our ground-based videos support um, PTN, like tonight, and um, various events like the Chamber of Commerce uh, dinner. We did a live feed on that. Um, we're a different kind of local news channel. We're really hyper-local news, covering just Pembroke-related news, and it's available all the time. You can watch it over and over if you want to. And, um, and one last thing. Um, in our entertainment section, we have a show called Cooking with Kenny and Kyle. And Kyle Harney is one of the stars, and Kenny Del Monte is another star. Um, and it's really a, a comedy show, not a cooking show, but it's based um, on the premise that it's a cooking show. It's really quite funny. Um, and we've done four of those so far, and we have one to complete our season. So it's in the process right now. So if anyone has any questions about what we do, Basic, basically, what I'd like to say is thanks for all the stuff that you do for the town because uh, I know we've used uh, you and your services on a number of occasions to help out on the Pembroke fisheries and uh, take pictures where it's a little difficult for us to go. And um, I think it's you know something for the future for the town to consider that maybe they would uh, possibly buy the fisheries a drone of their own. Uh, I mean, the fire department uses them in fires. Uh, Police department uses them for uh, doing raids and other things, so that they can keep an eye on, um, you know, an eye in the sky on the on the places. So it's it's really an up and up and coming thing. And I, I actually talked to uh, a guy in, in Philadelphia that has a big drone business, and and, um, and uh, he may decide to uh, come to Pembroke at some time in the future and talk about what the benefits would be from the whole drone service. You know, in town, so 
it's um, I'm actually studying for my own pilot's license. Oh really? Which will add to my regular pilot's license, but I can give you some tips on it if you want. So, yeah, that would be good. But uh, you appreciate everything that you do for the town, uh, because I, I really don't think that, <coughs> that the people know how much that the that you and your company or whatever uh, donate to the town um, of services that's, uh, that's of a great value to us. Well, I'm glad it's of some use. Um, I just want to say one other thing. Kyle asked me to mention this. Uh, tomorrow is the Chamber's uh, holiday gathering at our restaurant, 530 to 7.30. Everyone is invited to come meet the new Chamber President, Billy Boyle, and raise a glass to outgoing President, David Shea. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Town Administrator's report? Yeah, a couple of items, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Last uh, Monday on the 4th, uh, I met with the Community Compact Committee, and that was a group that, uh, that I formed that I thought would be a good cross-section of um, people that are interested in some of the projects and best practices that are um, being proposed by uh, the Community Compact Program in the town is uh, is kind of required to uh, pick a few uh, best practices uh, in various categories. I mean, you know, the uh, the uh, number of practices that are located uh, in the in the uh, handout from uh, the program, you know, it's pretty extensive, and so you know, having members of the Public safety, school department, advisory, um, and some other departments. Looking at that, and the list here is what was uh, discussed by the committee as to what the best practices um, that we are going to be looking at. I'm asking the committee to uh, prioritize them. At least I need two more. Um, on the list from uh, number two through 13. Uh, we've already decided that number one is the highest priority because we will be filling out the application to enter into the community compact program tomorrow. And uh, we will be asking for an amount of money anywhere between 100 and 150,000 for the new software system that will link the school department with the uh, town accountant and the town treasurer's office. So. That's our number one priority, and then we'll be looking at some of these other practices that we'll be applying for uh, in calendar year uh, 2018. Questions, comments? I have something uh, for you unrelated to what you just mentioned, though. If you, uh, as you know, you and I have been speaking uh, off and on regarding a. Uh, handicap accessibility right. for the town town beaches and also for Herring Run. Uh, could you just give the, the board and the public the same update that you gave sure. me on the phone this week? If, if you look at the list, if you look at number 11 under public accessibility, this would undertake an ADA self-evaluation and develop a transition plan. And as I was sharing with Dan, if you want to apply for a grant to have any of these projects paid for by the state, whether it be the Herring Run Park, uh, Town Landing, what have you, um, in order to be eligible for these grants, you have to have an ADA transition plan in place. And basically, none of us here are qualified to go ahead and look at a particular piece of property and determine what it would take to make a particular park or recreation area handicap accessible. And so one of the things that I think will be a high priority and I'll be on my list when I share it with the committee will be to, for the town to go after uh, uh, getting funded that ADA transition plan so that once you have that in place, then you can go after funding for projects at the Herring Run Park or any other recreational facility in town. Did you also further, Ed, and, and this is important for to be included in the minutes, Sabrina. Uh, the Commission on Disabilities uh, asked me specifically for a record of discussion, a public record, a document that they could have and hold 
for whatever reason he needs it for. Uh, so the minutes will be a public record. Could you also uh, expand on what you just mentioned and speak about the beach access? Here? Yeah, one of the priorities that we'll have for this spring is to make, uh, especially town landing and possibly a little sandy, but especially town landing uh, because of the size of the beach, um, more handicap accessible. And that would entail um, putting in some of these uh, mats that you've seen that Dan shared with the with the uh, with the board uh, a few weeks ago, and that will be a topic that I will be applying for community preservation funds uh, for the spring. Hopefully, there there will be a, a community preservation uh, article at the special within the annual, so that money will be available right away, so that we can have those uh, mats in place by the start of uh, the swim season this summer. Very good. Uh, and my second report is, as requested by Selected Stone, uh, an update for December 2017 on the DOR report. And I put in bold print in this uh, update things that have been established since my last report last year at this time. And so, uh, <coughs> you know, anything that you see that is in uh, bold print has been what's been accomplished by us uh, or undergoing um, and will be undergoing um, in 2018. I'd like to uh, ask, I had a couple of questions here, but I think it might be better if we had an opportunity to look at this list of what's done and the few that are remaining uh, to be completed or to be discussed whether they can be implemented. Uh, perhaps next week uh, we could uh, take a look at, at this uh, in, in depth more than we can do here tonight. So I would propose that on next week's agenda, if there, any of the board members had any questions or issues on your report, we would then bring it up. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And uh, just to let the public know that um, Usually on the first part of the meeting, most often I forget to, uh, to do this, but please note that this meeting and all of our meetings are, are being made available to the public through a live video or audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15, and it's being recorded for broadcast for future dates. So comments made in open session will be recorded. So if anybody's looking for any particular recordings, then uh, it would be available to you. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask the town administrator, is he uh, intending uh, tonight to uh, discuss the latest at the uh, COA? Oh, I think we all want to try to forget what really <laughs> what's transpiring, but yeah, I'm uh, with regret uh, announcing that uh, Anna Siri, our COA director, Tendered her resignation uh, Friday uh, to my office and notify her staff uh, Friday afternoon. And so uh, I'll be working with Anna to, uh, to look at a transition period and uh, we'll be starting the, um, the process to, to replace her. Um, she's uh, accepted a position at Beth Deaconess and uh, uh, actually returned her to her performed position that she had before she came here. Um, but things had changed at the hospital, so uh, she said basically it was an offer she couldn't refuse. So she's going back to uh, a position that she really enjoyed. If I could add something to that, her, her last day will be December 29th. And as the board remembers, uh, when the previous director retired and left, uh, it took us uh, some time to find the right person in uh, Anna Siri. And uh, we're right around the corner from the 29th of December. So what I would propose that we uh, dust off, if you will, the operation that we had in place for hiring uh, the previous 
to rent is replacement, which is in a series. And what I mean by that is that Ed headed it up for the board. Um, I was fortunate enough to assist him. As you know, I had six years' experience at the Council on Aging on their board of directors, so I'm pretty familiar with that operation. And of course, we also had the COA board uh, that was involved, and uh, Ed spearheaded that with them. And because we have to advertise the position, we have to make sure that we've got the duties down pat, that we don't want to change any. And uh, when you advertise these positions, they take a long time, and then we have to interview the applicants. It's a long process. And after December 29th, we won't have a full-time director. So uh, we would like to uh, fill that position as soon as possible with the right person. And uh, so I would like the, uh, the board to know that uh, that's what I think our plan, our action plan is. So uh, anybody had any questions, you could ask. That's what we're going to be doing. Well, seeing that you've done it uh, before, anyway, did you could take it over until uh, they appoint a new person in <laughs> it? It's an excellent <laughs> suggestion, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> Because you're always, you're always giving everything to Ed all the time, and you seem to have an expertise in it for six years. Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll take it under advisement, Mr. Chairman. It would be raised from water selectment. That's right. Thank you. Uh, I just have a couple things I wanted to bring to the attention. I uh, received a couple calls at home. Uh, one was about um, that the person was very upset that the... Um, DPW during the last storm uh, came down his street um, and sanded on uh, Pondview Avenue four times during the storm. Um, and he was upset about that and um, thought that it was a waste of salt and sand. So um, I'll talk to uh, Mr. Fulmine and see if that he can't not spend so much time on that street and come up to mine because we didn't get any. So. Um, the other thing was that I talked to a person that. Uh, had a problem with some water in a cellar and also that her house was sinking um, and that uh, she contributes that to uh, the high water level on Oldham Pond and also on the construction out front of, of her home um, which indicates that she thinks her house is sinking because of the, the racket and the noise and uh, the vibration from out front so um, I think that's probably something that that we should turn over to Ed Thorne good thing to have to look into that. So I wouldn't know where to start, but I agreed to go over and take a look in the cellar, but uh, in the crawl space, but it's uh, supposedly it's all buttoned up for now for the winter, so uh, might have to wait till the spring. That's all I have. Any new business? Mr. Chairman, I have one thing under new business. I just wanted to pass this out before I begin speaking about it. This is a paper from the Plymouth County Advisory Board. And the major update that we, that I have from Thursday's meeting, or last Thursday's meeting, is that the Plymouth County Advisory Board voted on allocating $1.26 million in the fiscal year 18 to the retirement fund, and then another 500000 every year until fiscal year 20, 2022. And with this plan, the, the county should be able to pay down its retirement liability by 2029. It's a very fiscally responsible thing to do. And I'll be sure to make sure this document gets on Pembroke's website for viewers at home. I'll we'll probably uh, give a copy of this to the um, advisory board as well, because they, that was one thing that they brought up, that they didn't think that the percentage was probably yeah, I'll be sure to get to them too. Yeah, we discussed that. You know, Matthew, this is the this is taking care of the unfunded liability for county employees. Yeah, for county employees. Right. Okay. <coughs> uh, you still on new business, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I'd like to bring up 
just a notice that the community the community center study committee will be meeting for the first time tomorrow evening at six o'clock right here in town town hall um, so anyone that's interested it's a it's a public meeting there are certain voted members who are capable of voting but the, the public is welcome uh, again that's tomorrow evening six o'clock uh, right here in town hall I got uh, one item, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, we have an uh, energy um, item on the community compact list, and uh, I've been in touch with the energy committee, uh, Nick Cicello, chairman. Uh, they were instrumental in bringing the Green Community Act to Pembroke. And with that, a uh, couple of hundred thousand dollars in round numbers uh, that came with that job that they did. And we have used that money to improve our electricity requirements with uh, pieces of equipment, bulbs, and that type of thing. Now, after the first year of being uh, in that position and getting that money automatically, we are in a situation now for the future where we have to apply uh, for grants and will be in competition with other green community towns. So I think that's something that the Energy Committee should be concentrating on. I talked to Nick. He's going to contact his committee members. Uh, who haven't met in a couple of weeks due to some personal issues. And he's going to let me know if uh, what size of a committee does he have, I'm hoping, uh, that will have all of their members back. They've done an excellent job in that regard and also in our acquiring of the solar farm on our recycling center property. Um, so we need to look for additional solar sites because the solar farm is not going to provide 100% of our electricity requirements. So if we could get a, one more site or two more sites, whatever it is, and we could get it up to 100%, we would save a lot of money on our budget. So there's two facilities right now that are interested in pursuing solar panels. One is the library, and the other is uh, windswept bogs uh, for help with their electric bill at the water treatment plant. So we need the energy committee to re-energize, if you will, themselves and uh, go after those two issues. And uh, Matthew has exhibited a great deal of interest in the environment. And I've spoken to Matthew, and he would like to be part of that energy committee because of his interest in these issues. And he has uh, agreed if the, and be our representative on that committee, if you will. So if the board would agree with that, um, I'm in agreement. Ixicello is, Matthew is. So I'm hoping the board will agree with us and uh, assign Matthew that responsibility. So I'll make that in a motion. I'll second. Questions or comments? I do. So wherever a, solar, a new solar field is being considered. Uh, I suggest that that area, the residents of that area, uh, be notified and you take the temperature of uh, the people that live are going to have to live near it uh, before you go too far because you can have the grandest plans in the world and then when someone finds out there's going to be solar panels in their backyard or within view of their house, uh, it could be an issue. The windswept bogs, for instance, the DPW floated the idea of putting a windmill there. And uh, we put a test balloon up just to see, so the residents could see how high it would be. 
and it did not go over well with the residents. It was there wasn't enough wind there either, Bill. You're right. The, the, the name is right. I right would right suggest to uh, expand on, on Dan's comments a little bit. I, I think that it will be a tough sell to uh, a blog, but I think we should conduct uh, a public hearing uh, when the decision is made to uh, potentially go forward to hear from the neighbors because I, I expect this Dan has alluded to that they're not going to be thrilled. And uh, I, I don't know that I can't necessarily disagree with them. That, that's, uh, that, that's an area where uh, you know people walk their dogs and have picnics and use the beach. Uh, they could keep the beach clean up. So you, you were talking earlier too about this about uh, maybe putting it on some of the buildings, uh, up at the town buildings. Um, Boys Club would be an excellent place to do that because it's, um, it, it, uh, their roof gets sun early morning late and it could probably take care of the elderly building. Do they have there. historic issues with that? Yes, uh, you will, there will be a bloodbath. No, I don't know if there is historic issues with um, the solar panels. I think the, a lot of those solar panels have passed that. But I don't know that there's an exemption for them. I would doubt it. Yeah. Well, all of these suggestions are really good, and which is why I think it'd be great to have a member of the selectmen on the energy committee and let keep us informed as to what's going on. Uh, I agree with all of these. I think they're very important, and they have to be uh, followed through. Probably never going to see them up there yeah. that high. Yeah. But in any event, that would be good for the library, for the elderly, and for the boys' club, and whatever else would be available. Yeah. So, so Matt, <coughs> we haven't taken the vote yet, but please take all of these thoughts into consideration as you meet. I will. Very, very good comments, and I agree with what everything Lou said. I really do think we can make Pembroke 100% energy efficient. Good. Well, Brockton keeps up taking the water from Great Sandy. We might have a solar field right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a motion. I haven't got a second yet. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of appointing Matthew, is that your motion? Yes. So the I second that, all right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all those in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I was asking who's motion, my second. I got it. I'd also just like to make another comment on the previous, uh, the previous report about the uh, Plymouth County Advisory Board. Thank you, Matthew, for representing us there. And uh, we, we just need to know what's going on in Plymouth County. We are a member, and our votes do count. So uh, I'm glad for your interest in that. Thank you for taking that on. No problem at all. It's my pleasure to go down and represent Pembroke. Okay, we did, uh, we did get some word, um, it's not really new business, it's under old business, but uh, we did get some word that um, Brockton's authorized $37,000 to replace the screening at the, the diversion pipe on the uh, back side of Fox Pond. So we'll see when the screen gets put in. <laughs> so supposedly they, have, they haven't seen the money in the bank yet, but uh, that would be a good thing. Uh, upcoming issues, December 18th, um, is a continued discussion of ruling on Medicare eligible retirees health insurance contribution rates. And, um, and I did talk to uh, Mike Buckley and I also talked to Kathleen McCarthy that could help me out understand it a little bit better um, and my thoughts would be um, because this is such a sensitive issue um, that we probably should appoint a board to um, oversee this and make some recommendations back to back to the board of selectmen because it's um, you're talking about people's personal information 
um, and I don't think that that's something that the uh, uh, Board of Selectmen so much should be involved in other than, than Ed and these two people that work for the town already uh, do this daily. Um, I don't know how the board feels about that, but I think of these three people, it was it was uh, mentioned that uh, from Dan's motion to to um, uh, to have this come up as a um, what do you call that as, as a uh, oh it's a hardship yes. Um, that's what I was looking for. So that, that there was a hardship. So um, maybe that's something that um, would that be something that you would be interested in? With interested, I have no choice. <laughs> right. I mean, you do that anyway, right? Yeah. Um, we we were prepared to have a report for you folks tonight, except the person that was before you um, wanted to come next week. So you'll have a. You'll have some information that will allow you to make an informed decision next week. Yeah, because I, I talked to, actually talked to both the town account mm -hmm. and the tax collector about, about some of these issues, not personal, but, but uh, as a whole, and I just think that um, probably we should back out of it a little bit, and seeing that you people do this every day, it, it might be something that... Um, yeah, and if anybody's got any questions, please call Kathleen. Yeah, yeah, they should, if any of you guys could reach out to him either one or both of these people, they have an all, a lot of knowledge about this. So. Like I said, we're prepared to make a report to the board. Yeah. Right. We would have done it tonight if they had been here. So. Okay. Well, I can see us voting on their recommendation, but I can't see us um, allowing another group or another committee to accept the authority of the board of select. We tell them that we're going to be the board of well, I think you're right, but I think you need somebody that needs to do the research and the background on these on these employees, on past employees, to find out whether they do have a hardship or not. And it's their recommendation that we would go by, not necessarily um, that we would make that. We'll make the final decision, but... And you're also going to have an opinion from the town council as well. Right. We brought them in, into this. I'm not trying to take the uh, take that away from the board of selectmen, but I just think that if it's uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things about HIPAA and everything else that we don't have knowledge about that these people deal with every day, and what I don't want to do is violate somebody's rights on the HIPAA or, or any of the other rules uh, that apply to retired group. People, so uh, that would be my suggestion anyway. Uh, so the next meeting will mm -hmm. have an update. Good. Also on uh, December 18th, uh, discuss the Selectman's 2018 calendar. Um, and on January 22nd, um, we want to open the uh, annual town meeting warrant. So, is there a need for executive session tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, there is, Mr. Chairman, and I would move under executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Rule Number 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Pembroke Permanent Firefighters Association, local number 2351 of the IAFF Union Grievance. Second. The chair does declare. All right, so that will uh, conclude tonight's business. Are we going to be coming back in open session to make any public comment? Only to adjourn. Only to adjourn. So that will uh, conclude. Oh. 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 Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. And, uh, and so that will conclude tonight's meeting uh, from the Pembroke Board of Selectmen of December 11, 2017. And uh, really hope you have a very uh, good holiday season, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Uh, happy Hanukkah or whatever other religion that you are. Have a, have a good holiday season anyway. And, uh, Hope Santa Claus brings you everything you want.